Thank you, Mr. Fuentes, on behalf of Mr. Bloomingfield and Mr. Bonnet. Uh, thank you. Here, I'll just step a little closer to me. Uh, Ms. Martinez, thank you for uh, reviving this tradition. Thank you for elevating this tradition. Uh, and thank you uh, to the Commission on the Status of Women. Uh, and thanks and congratulations to all the honorees. Uh, I want to give a shout out to uh, my friend, uh, Chief Gramala. Uh, I'm very lucky to have her overseeing Operations West Bureau, which includes my area. Congrats to her. Um, but I want to spend a few moments today talking about uh, my honoree. It's my great pleasure today uh, to recognize Dr. Michelle Cooley Strickland. Uh, she's a resident of Playa del Rey, a community activist in uh, the Westchester Playa area, and someone who has an incredibly extensive uh, CV, an incredi incredibly long resume with a number of accomplishments and bullet points, and there's a common thread to all of them, and that's that her life's work is focused upon improving the lives of children, uh, with a particular emphasis on young women. Uh, Dr. Cooley Strickland is a community-based clinical child researcher, a teacher, and as I said, a community leader. And she's invested not only in making her own neighborhood a better place, but in all of Los Angeles. Her impressive list of professional accomplishments and research is staggering. She's a licensed uh, child psychologist who joined the UCLA faculty in 2009. She's a research psychologist in the, this is a long name here, in the Center for Culture and Health in the Department of Psychiatry and Behavioral Sciences at the David Geffen School of Medicine at the MPI Semmel Institute for Neuroscience and Human Development at UCLA. She's an associate professor, an adjunct associate professor, in another long name, in the Department of Mental Health, Bloomberg School, Bloomberg School of Public Health at the John Hopkins University. Uh, she has been a principal investigator of grants funded by the National Institute of Mental Health, and her work has, has really focused on uh, studying the emotional and behavioral outcomes of young people who are exposed to community violence. Um, as a result of all of her professional accomplishments and all of her work, uh, she has appeared uh, as an expert psychologist on Oprah, on CNN, on KTLA, and on, on many other outlets. Uh, she's also, and I can attest to this personally, a leader in the community. Uh, and her work as a community activist really focuses, as I said, on education and on children. Uh, she recently, the past couple years, got involved with the Neighborhood Council of Westchester and Playa. And in that role, she revitalized the Education Committee of the Neighborhood Council, uh, which had not met in a couple years. She brought it back to life and made it a true force in the community. Um, she's active with the LAX Coastal Chambers Education Committee, with the Venice High School's Comprehensive Modernization Project Advisory Group, with LAUSD's Westchester Playa del Rey Playa Vista Instructional Pathways Collaborative Work Group, uh, and also works on the SoCal Gas Company's Community West Side Advisory Council. Uh, now, in addition to all of that, uh, she's raising two daughters with her husband, Tony, uh, in Playa del Rey. And she is one of those uh, amazing super moms who seems to be doing everything that her kids are involved in. Uh, she has been involved in the AYSO of Westchester, in Westchester Lacrosse, and in the Westchester Girl Scouts. Uh, her kids went to uh, the Westchester Neighborhood School, and when there, she was a Westchester Neighborhood School room parent for nearly 10 years, then a Westchester Neighborhood School parent board member, and held an executive position as the director of the Grade Level Ambassador Program. Uh, she's volunteered at Marymount High School as a parent ambassador since 2014, and since 2013, she has regularly volunteered as a Sunday school teacher as well. So uh, she does it seven days a week, uh, and she's absolutely phenomenal. Uh, she's really a pioneer for women and girls everywhere, and uh, it's an incredible privilege for me to be honoring her today uh, with this plaque and Aww. these flowers. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. Uh, let me move the mic. Thank you, Mr. Bonner and Mr. Cedillo. First, Nuri, um, I'm sorry, Councilwoman Martinez. Uh, first of all, thank you for doing this. Uh, it is needed, uh, the lack of 
participation of women on the council um, is embarrassing. And uh, clearly there's a pool of talent uh, for someone of you here to run for office and to become a future council person. So know that all of you, when you take the awards from us today, that this is the expectation that we have uh, for you. Uh, obviously, we have some commissioners with us today who seem very well poised also. Uh, you'll work less hours, you'll get paid more money, and um, you'll like it. I'll just say that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, I want to, uh, oh, first of all, and then Monica and Jose. Thank you, uh, uh, Jose, for honoring someone who is um, very prominent in the first district, comes from the first district. Uh, Monica and I were there on Sunday. We opened, I think it's the, the first or the newest um, shelter since we declared the uh, emergency. And we were there. It's been a great success. We want to build on, on it. And uh, Monica is just tenacious. I mean, that's, that's what makes leadership is to have a focus, have a singular focus, and then to do the follow-up. So, Monica, uh, it was great to see you Saturday. It's always great to see your daughter. It's amazing. That's one thing. Uh, that wasn't mentioned is that she's everywhere, but she's also there with her family. And uh, she brings her daughter with her all the time. And it's uh, fun to watch your daughter grow up uh, as we do this. Uh, let me talk about uh, Jennifer Virgin, who I got to meet actually when I was campaigning uh, in the first district. Uh, I got to meet her and her husband, Eddie White, who was the founder of the, what's it called, Rampart? Westlake North. Michael yeah. Prince. I call it Rampart Westlake uh, uh, Neighborhood Council. And, you know, we lost Eddie about a year and a half ago, two years. What? Two years. Two years, yeah. But uh, Jennifer is just like has not skipped a beat. There's a lot of details in here. But she works with, with Anna, and, you know, it's one of the areas that's uh, most challenged in the city of Los Angeles. Uh, but we have tremendous confidence in her work at uh, Rampart Station. Uh, is incredible and so it, it's an area that if you just f go from the news uh, you go from the you know veneer of it you think wow that's a really tough neighborhood but when you drill down a little bit and you see leaders like Jennifer then you see wow that's a really great place to live it might have density it might uh, not have all the economics that we would like but it really is a neighborhood. And you ought to see some of the events that we have. It's, uh, it's uh, really noteworthy when we have uh, those cookouts in front of uh, the wow. station. Yeah, in front of Rampart. Uh, it's, a, it's a real pleasant place. I thought it was going to be very challenging. But uh, with her leadership, uh, she's president of the Neighborhood Council. Uh, I know uh, President Wesson would like that she has an annual pet health event. Uh, she does the community health and resource fair. We do the summer movies there at the park. We do the holiday giveaways. Uh, we're constantly doing part of our cleanups there. Uh, and then we do the mother and father day luncheons. And then we have these picnics uh, out in front of uh, Rampart. So I can't stress enough how uh, central she is. You know, she's one of those icons of a community. And, and you know, the horseshoe is filled with them today. Icons who people look to to bring stability to their neighborhood and to bring leadership. And so I'm very flattered and honored uh, and pleased, and I know Eddie is looking down on us, pleased to um, honor her as a pioneer today. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, Mr. Cedillo. Yes. We're back in the valley, Mr. England. Yes, thank back in the valley. <laughs> Well, um, first of all, this is by far our longest presentation of the year every year for good reason, for good reason, um, because we're recognizing not just the pioneer women, but the true leaders in our communities. And I have a special treat that, and an opportunity to work with somebody who is just beyond incredible and phenomenal. And that's Paula. Paula Kreshim is here. Stand up. So I don't need, um, my staff did a great job of preparing a lot of talking notes for me and I don't need any of them. 
Um, I'm just going to speak from the heart. And I will tell you that she is unbelievable. Paula is the president of the Porter Ranch Neighborhood Council. And for those of you who have not been asleep for the last five months, know full well that you can't open a newspaper, you can't turn on a television channel, you can't go on the internet, on any social media network or blog without seeing Paula as a champion fighting for the community with the Porter Ranch Gas League. Not only that, um, we, we put together, she's my go-to person on everything. We're on speed dial, um, trying to always figure out whether it's early, early in the morning or late at night, um, what our next step is. What are we going to do to help the nearly 20,000 people that were relocated? And we established the Community Advisory Council, and um, I appointed Paula to that as the chair as well. That means every single week it's webcast with 18 homeowner association members, four neighborhood councils, um, all the regulatory agencies, and it goes on and on. And she's a champion on that, too. If that's not enough, she puts together every single year for Shepherd the Hills Church, one of the largest churches in Los Angeles, the largest gathering for the 4th of July fireworks spectacular in the city of LA that gets roughly 50,000 people every year. 50,000 people. Um, and that's not enough. She actually converted the church into and partnered with the Red Cross into an evacuation center. So during the fires, we have a place to go to be safe. Um, and not only did get, getting all that approved, we actually had to put it in place a few years ago during the Cessnon fires. And I was there. And Paula was there. And she goes big on everything. It's not even like, well, we're going to create a shelter she had all the food catered in for thousands of people from all the local restaurants. I mean, you walked in, and it wasn't just cold cuts and sandwiches. She had California Pizza Kitchen come in. She had, you name every restaurant, and they set up these tables. And then she had all, she was going over to Walmart, Target, and everything, and getting all kinds of people to bring things in for everybody. Toys for the kids. I mean, just no stone goes unturned. She's remarkable. She's beyond a pioneer woman. She's a true champion. And, um, and I consider her family um, because I, I love Paula and I, what she does. And to always keep calm, to always maintain composure, to always just share the facts and not editorialize everything. And we're talking about times of major crises. I try to take one from her playbook as often as I can and learn from her uh, because she has a lot to teach everyone and all of us. So from my heart to yours, you. you are absolutely by far my woman of the year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Right, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Englander, and continuing to the northeast of the valley, yeah, Mr. Fuentes. Thank you, colleagues. Uh, it's my honor, colleagues, to introduce to you Dr. Keita Curry. Um, from, she's my pioneer woman for Council District 7, and like Mr. Englander mentioned, her leadership really transcends district boundaries. She is a real, real leader. And let me share with you what Dr. Curry has accomplished. She is the CEO of the D.D. Hirsch Mental Health Services and has been at the helm of the organization since 1999. Under her guidance, the agency's services have more than doubled. Dr. Curry brings personal and professional experience to the management of D.D. Hirsch. She understands the struggles of uh, families that deal with suicide and severe bipolar disorder. She's a passionate advocate. She has testified before the California State Legislature and served on state advisory committees on suicide prevention and stigma and discrimination. 
Didi Hirsch's Via Avanta in Pacoima, the only facility in the San Fernando Valley, has been a haven for women struggling with mental uh, disorders, substance abuse, mental illness, domestic violence, and poverty. They heal in an environment of safety, respect, and dignity. It was among the nation's first programs to recognize the importance of keeping families intact during this critical service delivery, keeping parents and children together, mothers and their children together, real leader uh, in her field. While learning to manage their illnesses, they build interpersonal and life skills through all kinds of communal activities that not just help the parent, the mother in this case, but also the children. And they also do that by reaching out and trying to continue uh, the residents' approach of, of the service delivery. We, um, as I mentioned uh, a second ago, acknowledge how great uh, Dr. Curry is, and clearly all of the honorees today are amazing. Uh, but Dr. Curry is really revolutionary in the service delivery that she's doing for this very, very critical community. But to do it the way that she does with the sensitivity, it's my absolute honor to have you be our Pioneer Woman of the Day. Give her a big round of applause. Pioneer Woman of the Year. Thank you. There you go. Thank you very much. And let's do. Thank you, Mr. Fuentes. And to close our program, Mr. Harris Dawson. Thank you so much, Councilwoman Martinez. And thank you for helping lead this uh, beautiful celebration this morning. This is, uh, in my short time on the council, one of the most amazing things I've been, a, been able to be a part of. And I just want uh, everybody in the audience to give a big round of applause to all the members, the care and, and love that they put into these presentations this morning has just been amazing. I've been inspired to be uh, an Angelino, and, and I'm excited about the future because of the women that we've seen today. Uh, this uh, being Women's History Month, we're uh, proud to have the Pioneer Women's Celebration. Uh, these are the people who help keep our, our uh, communities intact. In the 8th District, we are proud to honor uh, Leticia Barajas, she is the Vice President of Academic Affairs and Workforce Development at Los Angeles Trade Technical College in the new ninth, but that serves all of Los Angeles. Let's give her a big round of applause. In addition to implementing, organizing, and administering instructional programs, Ms. Baraja supervises the deans of all academic areas and provides dynamic leadership for a number of campus-wide initiatives, such as the Pathways to Academic Career and transfer success models. LA Trade Tech's uh, innovative student success initiative that has been recognized all over the country. I think it's important to note that LA Trade Tech is one of the only programs I think in the country that has had a visit from the Secretary of Labor, the Secretary of Transportation, and the President of the United States two times. Uh, and it's because of the remarkable workforce development work that they do there where uh, Ms. Barajas is a leader we, uh, she's also a champion for at-risk youth, for women, for displaced workers, for folks who are transitioning out of places like Dee Dee Hirsch and other institutions or out of domestic violence situations that need to move into the workforce or perhaps into higher paying jobs. She is also, and I'm very proud, a, a, a daughter, a sister, and a mother of the 8th Council District. She went to Manchester Elementary School, walking distance from our district office, uh, her, her mom, who is here today, her mother and father were married at St. Michael's on Manchester. She was baptized there, went to Laces uh, in the 10th District, and uh, took advantage of Southwest College and has just uh, been, uh, I think, what represents uh, what we call the Phoenix out of South Los Angeles. Living right in the neighborhood, when you turned on the TV in 1992 and you saw the big giant fire, fires, those were in the Vermont Manchester neighborhood, and those, that was in, in, in her neighborhood, and her mother and sister and, and two children are here. You all should stand up. Stand up. I want everybody to see you. Her mother, Angelina, her sister, Blanca, and her daughters, Maya and Isabel. Well, a lot of people picked up and said, we're so discouraged, we're going to give up, we're going to move. 
Uh, and this family didn't do that. They stayed, they invested, and she continues to invest to this day. And person by person, family by family, LA Trade Tech plays the leading role in getting people into the workforce and turning our community into a place from high unemployment to high employment with good jobs and good careers and where folks can lead good families and good lives. So again, thank you for all of your service and thank you for what you will do in the years to come. Eighth District Pioneer Woman of the Year, Leticia Barajas. Thank you very much, Mr. President. And that concludes our presentation for our Pioneer Women this year. I want to thank all of our friends at the Commission of the Status of Women. If they can please stand up. Thank them for leading the way and recognizing extraordinary women in Los Angeles. And thank you, colleagues, for recognizing an extraordinary woman in your council district. I sincerely appreciate the time. Mr. President, I try to limit it to a, a minute each, but as you no, know... No, you did the best I cannot, ever. Uh, there's only so much I can do. This so there you was, have it. Thank you very Ms. much, colleagues. Ms. Martinez, this was the best Pioneer Women Awards that I've been a part of. So you should, let's give Nuri another round of applause. And, and Ms. Martinez, it's of such importance that we shouldn't even be concerned about the time with this one. So let us go back to our agenda. Mr. Cedillo. Oh, Mr. Cedillo. Podium. Vice teacher and the principal. The floor is yours, Mr. Cedillo. Mr. President, thank you. What an incredible morning we've had acknowledging tremendous, tremendous work and leadership uh, in the city. Um, it's just been an incredible morning. And so uh, obviously all of us are moved. I want to take a moment to talk about my district, leadership in my district, and one of the most extraordinary young men that I've met and who will be uh, without a doubt, one of the most important leaders of our city, our region, our state, and our nation. First of all, let me talk about Lincoln High School. You know, I grew up in Boro Heights, and Lincoln High School was kind of up the street. And, uh, you know, we're kind of uh, schools from the east side and the northeast side. Uh, we don't get a lot of attention, but I have to tell you, uh, since I've been there, and I, I, it's just coincidental, I don't think it's, it's, uh, there's a causal relationship. But just in the last year, let me tell you about Lincoln High School. Uh, we've won the city CIF Division II baseball championship. And you remember we brought these young men in here. Uh, in addition, uh, one of our students placed third. And I know you were very excited when you were on that, those solo awards. But this uh, young man placed third out of 2,883 wow. uh, student uh, films. This was on C-SPAN. We also just recently won, and we should be bringing them in soon, the Lincoln High School won the City CIF Division Three Basketball Championship. And so this is a place where we have a, a rich tradition in sports, uh, some of our uh, uh, alumni have gone on to play for the Dodgers. Uh, this is the home of Kenny Washington. And so there's a rich tradition of sports there. But 
There's also a emerging rich tradition as it relates to academics. And so we're here today to talk about a young man, uh, Cedric Argueta, who is one of 302,531 students to take the AP Calculus AB exam and what is one of only 12 in the world in the world to score a five, earning every single point possible. Wow. I'm so proud of him because, uh, you know, I have a nephew who's like him. Uh, he's at Princeton right now, and he's doing a great job. And, and he, uh, I was asking him if he was going to go to Princeton. Uh, he's going to go to Caltech. And, Wonderful. Or Stanford. I got it. That, or Stanford. You know, Congressman Becerra is like leaning on him to uh, go to Stanford. I, you know, if you're still open, I, I'll push UCLA. Don't worry. Uh, <laughs> it's just amazing. Him, his family, his mom and dad are here. Uh, what a consummate Los Angeles story. What a consummate American story. Here you have... His father comes from El Salvador. His mother comes from the Philippines. They end up in Lincoln Heights. They work as he volunteers at a nursing home. He follows their, not just does he, you know, the realization of their dreams, their hopes and aspirations, but he embodies their work ethic. He volunteers in other programs. I mean, besides the, his academics, he's also a volunteer and he's very active in school. And so it's, it's just amazing to have him here. Now he's representing us. I mean, he's, he has, you know, he gets more press than us, you know, just so you guys can appreciate him. You know, he's at the school board. He's at the Science Center. You know, Congressman Becerra is lobbying him on behalf of Stanford. He's with Chief Beck. He's getting the Cesar Chavez Legacy Awards. I mean, he's, you know, he is the real deal, and he is, you're looking at the future. You're looking at the future, and his family is so proud. Uh, they're here with him. Uh, today, and so I want us to, to acknowledge him, but this doesn't happen by itself. And all of us are here because we all had that one teacher, that one mentor, that one counselor, and that is uh, Mr. Anthony Yam. He is the stand and deliver of Lincoln Heights. And so, where is where are you, sir? Let's, come up. Let's give Mr. Young great work, sir. And, and, uh, He's the stand and deliver of Lincoln Heights. He's the coordinator of the math, science, and technology magnet at Lincoln High School. Uh, he's been there five years, and every student in his AP calculus class has passed that exam. And it's a very rigorous exam. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's the same thing. You focus on one thing. They put in extra hours every day. They're studying on the weekends. He's built a team. And it's... it's, uh, it's and I like to say, you know, you know, we're geeks, right? It's a team of geeks, a team of people who in the, are going to build our future. You know, they're going to be the engineers and the scientists and uh, those that help us uh, solve many of the medical challenges uh, that will confront us in the future. And I'm just very proud to have both of them here. Uh, uh, Mr. Yam, we... we commend you for your leadership and your commitment and we love the fact that you're in Lincoln Heights uh, and then and then uh, of course Cedric uh, we're so proud of you and we wish you well uh, on the um, school of your choice uh, and, and make it the school of your choice Mr. Congressman Becerra and he's a friend of mine you know he went to the school of his choice so you make sure you go to the school of your choice and if it's Stanford, so be it. Uh, and if it's Caltech, we will applaud you as well. And then finally, let me deviate from my, from my notes. But someone who is here as, almost as much as I am is Principal Jose Torres. And where are you? Give Principal Torres a round of applause. I see him all the time. You do a good job, man. He's here as much good as I job. Am. And so with that, uh, uh, it's been a long day. There's been a lot of brilliant people here, talented people. But we are, at this moment, looking at the future of this city. Thank you very much, my colleagues. Come on, young man, say a few words. Uh, 
Good morning. Well, I guess good afternoon now. It's about noon. Uh, council members and Mr. President, thank you for this opportunity to speak to you guys and to be recognized by you guys. It's an honor to be here with uh, my family, my mom and my dad. I know we were recognizing a woman before. My mom is so important to me, so I'm really grateful. That she, she is your here. pioneer woman. And I'd like to thank you guys for all the work that you do. I grew up in L.A. I've always been in L.A. And L.A. wouldn't be the L.A. that I love if it weren't for you guys. So thank you for well, that. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Mr. Rue. 